July was a pretty terrible month for solar production and generation, but Octopus Energy still paid me £143.17 because we exported 954 kilowatt hours and we imported just 126.98 kilowatt hours at a cost of £18.25, which means that our octopus agile rate averaged at 14.37 pence a quick reminder of my solar panel system on the front of our house we've got six 430 watt all black panels and we also have 16 panels on the rear of our house uh, also 430 watt all black they all went on at the same time the rear of the house is facing northwest that's the orientation almost exactly northwest and the front of the house is almost exactly southeast and these are long e hymo 6 uh, all black panels if you want to see more detail about the installation go back and watch some of the videos i've covered it in detail 21 minute video that with this thumbnail will show you all of the details of the solar array and the complete system to go with these panels we paired it with a sunsync 8.8 .8 kilowatt hybrid inverter and we have no battery storage uh, for strategic reasons right let's skim through this slideshow that i've prepared for you so we are down on our generation compared to june our july generation is 1153 kilowatt hours of that we exported 954 we which generated income of 143 pounds we imported 126 or nearly 127 kilowatt hours which cost us 18 pound 25 as i said our octopus import rate averaged below 15p so we are uh, earning higher because our export rate is at 15p and our import rate is 14p well 14 in a bit and of course the standing charge for the month over 31 days £18.99 so we net profit of £105.93 pence. here's our generation compared to our forecast so although July was a miserable month and a lot of uh, people I'm seeing are already saying that their generation was down between 10 to 20 percent compared to previous years we are still up on our forecast the blue bars are the forecast and the orange bars are what we've actually generated and nearly every single one of those extra kilowatt hours are due to our northwest facing roof which has performed so much better than we expected especially in these summer months where the sun is very high Here's the export versus import. Since the system was installed uh, the last day of January, it was commissioned, and you can see that trend. Uh, I've, of course, got a air source heat pump. If you're new to the channel, you might not know that, but uh, you can see that our import has um, fallen dramatically and our export is still doing enough to hopefully offset us and carry us through the winter with credit here you can see in the green bars is the solar generation and the yellow bars is how much we've exported and you can see that july is pretty much on par with may just a little bit better but uh, not much in it but down on june and moving on to the heat pump consumption you can see that in july we used very similar to uh, june negligible difference and it's all of that energy used was for the hot water generation here i've put the figures on for both june and july so you can see how much worse july was our best day was 55.2 our worst day 11.7 and our mean was 37.2 one thing to note i should have overlaid the graph of june and july but this is just the generation chart for july and you can see it was all over the place it was a lot more erratic than june was june was a lot more consistent um, and that obviously dragged the average up on june quite nicely anyway here's the comparison northwest to southeast the aspects so uh, the 73 percent of our solar panel square meterage is uh, on the northwest roof and only 27 percent of the surface area is on the southeast roof but the southeast roof generates 30 percent of our energy and the northwest roof is generating 70 percent of our energy and you can see the actual figures over here by kilowatt uh, kilowatt peak and the kilowatt hours that were generated in the month so um, the northwest roof has performed 
better in July than any of the previous months. So that will be for a few reasons. It was cloudier than June. It was also the sun was a little bit lower, but it was come of the, a lot more dispersed and indirect light. Uh, per panel production, you can see that our panels on the northwest roof ge each generated 50 kilowatt hours uh, for the month, and on southeast ones on the front of the house generated 58 kilowatt hours each. Uh, so are the north facing panels worth it? I mean, mine are northwest, so it's not exactly a north south split, but this particular month they generated 87% of what my southeast panels uh, generated. So, yes, in the summer months they're doing really, really well. Uh, so, what about optimizers? I've decided to take a little bit of a different. Uh, angle to them because uh, I've consistently showed that they're only actually bringing me an extra 1% of power because of my hard shading on the front of the house. They're not ideal as they would be if there was scattered or intermittent shading from power lines or trees or something. But what's really nice is the uh, panel by panel uh, performance monitoring and it shows that although it was only 2.58 kilowatt peak you can see that we reached 3.1 kilowatts at one point which shows that even in the month of July that was poor and we had hot weather and it was cloudy so the temperature was too high for the panels to be perfectly efficient and we had lots of indirect sunlight we still managed to outperform what the claimed figures were. Anyway, um, it also shows me that the difference between my panels is virtually nothing. Okay, um, moving on. This shows a little bit of the shading issue. Uh, July self-consumption, 196.78 kilowatt hours, and we exported 956. And so I've talked before about I opted not to install a battery and I'm going down the uh, route or the tactic or the strategy of seasonal offsetting and so I'm building up credit throughout the summer generation months to carry me through the winter months. Okay, um, next. Uh, this one's an export graph and again you can see it's all over the place and once again June we performed much better and the July it was terrible and one day we only exported 7.3 kilowatt hours which was absolutely terrible for a summer month so here shows you the slice of how much we're consuming compared to how much we're exporting 196 kilowatt hours versus 956 and if we put the self-consumed uh, kilowatt hours at the standard um, price cap rate at the moment for my area that would be 50 pounds that we've self-consumed on top of the export export payment that uh, octopus have given us for 143 so potentially that's 193 pounds that we've earned this month um okay this is made possible my seasonal offsetting strategy is made possible really through um octopus energy and the smart tariffs that they provide if you're interested you can sign up, you get £50, I get £50. I'm on Octopus Agile, it's working really well at the moment. Um, these show some of the uh, kind of uh, feel-good factor from the apps. The one on the left is the Tigo app and the one on the right is from the Sunsync app. And as you can see, my six panels on the front, Tigo are saying it's the equivalent to 12.7 trees planted. And my Sunsync inverter, which covers all 22 pa panels, is saying it's the equivalent to planting three trees. As we've discussed before, reducing consumption and reducing emissions is much more uh, important and has a much quicker impact than um, planting trees or any of those things but anyway um, here's some interesting figures you might want to pause it and have a look here's one of the generation uh, charts for a day which shows the generation profile um, I don't know what this was in the morning maybe putting on some appliances early but basically the green is the uh, solar generation the yellow is the export the red is our usage so you can see there's just a little bit of time and a bit of time after 8 p.m where we're drawing a little bit of power from the grid there i guess that's kind of 9 p.m onwards and you can see this was the 
uh, best day of generation throughout July despite the very high temperatures and you can see at what points in the day we reached our power output so because it was so warm in the middle of the day we didn't get up to seven or eight kilowatts we we peaked up at just over six kilowatts um, there at 20 past one and the generation starts at 5 30 in the morning and ends at 9 p.m even though that was the very end of July and uh here we're, we've got the initial projections of the payback um, and it was originally looking like it would be six years, eight months. Adjusting the figures, we're already down to five years, eight months because the system is overperforming. But um, I will update this probably in a few more months, especially towards the end of the year. I think that actually we're going to probably adjust that down to just over five years for a full payback. So this is the final slide to just tell me to shut up and stop recording. So thank you for watching. I do this every month in between my solar videos. I mainly put out content about my air source heat pump and how great that is. So consider all the YouTube stuff if you want. Otherwise, thanks for watching.